Hello. Good afternoon. How's everybody doing? My name is Heather Rice. I am a teacher, um, actually a professor of instruction at the University of Texas in Austin. Does anybody know where Austin is? Austin? It's the capital of Texas. I'm from Texas. Have you ever met anybody from Texas? No. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. No. I'm from Texas, um, right, the big state, and I actually teach Russian uh, at the University of Texas. I teach first and second year Russian, so like baby Russian. Um, so, right, possibly, whatever. Um, so I want to talk to you today about this online Russian course that I developed for our students at the University of Texas. It's completely online. We have classes that meet in person, that meet face-to-face, -face, but my, the chair of our department, she wanted to develop an online course so that our students could more comfortably access the instruction, okay? So, teaching and learning Russian language online. And like I said, my name is Heather Rice. I'm at the Department of Slavic and Eurasian Studies at the University of Texas at Austin. And I work in the College of Liberal Arts. This is, maybe you recognize this and you can read it. This is the cover of my course. And we call it It's a joke. Yeah, it's kind of a play on words. Um, my students don't understand. When they start the course, they have no idea what that means. And so I explain it's funny in Russian because we're online and we're in touch. And this is supposed to be me in a birch forest with a um, precocious hedgehog named Adyek. So my course is three semesters. A semester in the United States is 15 weeks long. So we meet three semesters and this covers two years of college level Russian in the United States. Um, it's what's called mostly asynchronous. Asynchronous means we don't meet in person. It means that students at home access all of the content on their own without me. Um, and we only get together one time a week. I'll talk about that. The instruction is communicative based, meaning I try to teach students not just how to read and write, but to communicate in Russian so that if they go to a place where Russian is spoken, they will know how to say some things, like go to a cafe, go to a, a bazaar, and how to just talk to people in basic language. Um, and we cover five skills, reading, writing, speaking, listening, and culture. Okay, so why are we online? Um, it's an alternative to the in-person classes. So uh, during COVID, we all had to go online. But I created this before, before coronavirus, before the, the lockdown. Um, and we did it for students who want to take Russian or who need to take Russian for a course requirement, for a major requirement. Um, and for some reason, they cannot come to class. They cannot come to campus to meet in person it's more comfortable for them to meet online. It gives everybody some flexibility. They can decide, students can decide on their own when they want to do their work, if they want to do it in the morning, or in the afternoon, or in the evening. You know, they don't have to do it at nine o'clock every morning, they can do it whenever they want. So it gives students some flexibility. Um, and it's less expensive. Uh, most of the time, our textbooks are like this big for Russian, they're, they're super big. And they're really, they're heavy, they're cumbersome, and um, really expensive. And this is free for our students. Um, and for me, it's easily modifiable. So I created all of the content. And if I see something that is no longer any good, or is old, just needs updating, I can go in and do that. With a printed textbook, you know, you can't do that very easily. Everything is printed. You have to have a second edition, third edition, that's expensive. This, I can just go inside and make changes. Um, and having this online 
opens the door to the greater community. So I've had students enroll in my class who are in Paris, who are in Jamaica, who are in Canada. Um, so they don't have to be in Texas. They can be anywhere in the world. Uh, it's really cool. Um, let's see. Okay, but in order to join the class, you have to have access to Zoom. Does everybody know Zoom? You have to have access to Zoom, um, video sharing, and high-speed internet. Uh, you have to have the camera, uh, because when we do meet online, we need to see each other. And I also give students assignments where they have to meet each other um, in Zoom outside of regular class hours. So they need a camera and, of course, a microphone, because we're learning language. Um, so I'm going to tell you what it looks like. So we use something called Canvas, which is the uh, platform so that we deliver the materials on. And teachers nowadays use something called the flipped classroom. So what we do is instead of everybody coming to class and me saying, okay, everybody, the genitive case is, you know, tell everybody what the endings are. I tell the students to go home and read about it first practice it, and then when they see me, we can just practice how to say it. So I don't explain the rules to them in person. They research it on their own. With the materials that I made, they learn about it, and then they come to me and we practice. Okay, so when they, when they open their website, this is what they see. Um, they have this overview and goals, and they see what they're gonna learn about at the beginning of each chapter of each unit. So this is unit one. They're gonna learn about Russian names. Uh, no, I'm sorry, this is unit two. They're going to learn how to sound more Russian in pronunciation, how to accent, how to get the accent right. Um, they're gonna talk about who is in their family. They're gonna learn how to describe where things are. So like in Russian, you know how the endings of words always change? Yeah. For English speakers, it is a nightmare. And my students, my students will all the time say something like, um, stool stait na pol. And I'm like, what? They, they, they don't want to do it. Why? They ask, why? Why do I have to put this ending on the word? And so that's, that's really hard uh, for us at first. So we really practice that. Um, what it looks like in Canvas, this platform that we use, this program, they log in, this is what it looks like. Anybody, anywhere, can create a Canvas course. Ours looks like this, orange and white, because that's the colors of the University of Texas. Um, and they open it up, and I tell them to go to this thing called modules. And this is essentially where they see all of like the table of contents, right? The, the, what they're gonna learn about. So this is one open module, and they can see they need to do all of these things by Monday, June 15th. They have to do all of these things. So maybe they have to watch some videos, maybe they have to read a little bit and do some exercises, some quizzes, but they have all of that. Um, because it's a language, we're learning a lot of vocabulary, right? And we're not in person. I'm able to, because we're online, I create vocabulary pages for them. And in this page, I can embed the audio files. So students can open the page and they can see, oh, abricot. I mean, they don't know how it sounds, right? They see it and they go, uh, abricot, maybe. You know, they don't know, but it's apricot in English. So they push play and they hear abricos. They understand, oh, okay. Um, so I try to give them an example of how things sound. Okay, they won't do that. Um, I also give them a lot of pages here embedded in the course to read about. So this is perf uh, perfect verbs and the future tense. This is another thing that 
schools, English speakers. So, for example, you know the difference between zealots and zealots. <laughs> we don't understand. They say, what? <laughs> Why do we need to know that? So I have to try and explain what it is. And even I am still terrible at this. I, it's so difficult. Um, and because we don't have a textbook, a printed textbook, because we're online, we can use all kinds of things. We can use sound, we can use video, we can use animation to help teach these concepts about Russian language. So one thing I started doing was making, you know, PowerPoint, the program PowerPoint. I make um, these videos using PowerPoint with animation. Um, so I'm gonna try, we'll see if this works. I'm gonna try to show you one of these. Adzin. The number one is Adzin. Dva. Number two is Dva. Tri. The number three is Tri. So they get some Russian culture, they get the sound, you know, it's fun. Adzin. The number to review, this next thing is called the light board. This is a, like a magic board. I made these videos where I stood here and there was like a glass screen in front of me and I could write. And then in post-production, after filming, the camera, they would flip the screen. So it looks like I'm writing backwards with my left hand and I'm not, it's really cool. It's magic. Um, so here I'm just telling them about oh, these good loggy, these, um, what is that called? Thank you. <laughs> the prepositions. Mishdu means, well, why don't I just show you? I've got this all drawn on the board, so why don't I just show you what it all means, okay? What I want you to take note of is that I'm going to be using these prepositions up here plus baritoni padiesh, plus the instrumental case. Хорошо, посмотрите, послушайте, посмотрите, and don't judge me too harshly for this artwork. Так, где у нас кошка? Кошка тоже на полу, right? Cat's also on the floor. But what else can we say? Кошка, hmm? if I want to say, where's the cat in relation to the TV? Где кошка? Точнее. More specifically, where's the cat? Кошка под телевизором, да? Вот у нас кошка, она под телевизором. Под. А что значит под? А? Кошка под телевизором. Under, right? Хорошо, под. So, they can watch it as many times as they want to. So, in class, you know, when a teacher is standing up, Maybe they talk really fast and you don't catch everything. You don't have time to write it down. This way, they just rewind it. They can watch it as many times as they want to or they can skip over it if they already know it. They don't have to watch it, right? So, let's see, what's next? My cursor. All right, and then, this is also fun. You know green screen? Anybody nope. know green screen, right? So we, this is my TA, my assistant, I'm back there. We would go into the studio where there was a green, like green paper behind us and the artists, the graphic designers in our department drew these pictures for us and we could pretend like we were in this scene to teach about uh, clothing. So I'll play this for you. Don't, don't judge me too harshly for my bad Russian accent, okay? Three days. <laughs> Egor, da, gotova, da, ya gotova. No, harosho, devai. Tara! Katilumesh. Um, moshe be in shaki. Moshe be shaki. Da, o. So, it's fun. But What's really hard is when we're there in front of the green screen, we don't see 
this picture. Yeah. So we have to keep in our mind where things are because in the moment I have no idea what's actually there. I'm just going by memory. Um, so, but that's been really fun to create this to help teach Russian. So then, um, what do the students get? Uh, what do they have to work with to learn Russian? So you saw the videos, some of the videos they see. Um, we don't have a printed textbook, like I said, um, but I try to make content that's gonna be relatable and accessible and interesting, hopefully. And um, I try to make creative and effective use of being online, right? We're online, let's use it to our advantage is what I try to do. Um, because we can use digital media and we can use online resources. Um, and like I was saying, we've got this at our hands. We can use video, audio, text, graphics, and different websites to help us learn Russian. Uh, I was going to show you an example of something that they do. Um, so I showed you how they open up these modules and they can see everything that they're supposed to do for a day. So all of these things are laid out intentionally in this order. So they may have a warm up, followed by a quiz, followed by something about culture, um, followed by some kind of practice. And everything that has a date and points next to it means it's graded. An example of, okay, modules, uh, okay. So they might have to click on a quiz, right? This warm up, they have to decide, or right? And so they'll, they'll say, they will, right? Sounds wrong, right? But they, this is hard. It's really, really hard for us. Um, so I try to test them on the difference between Kuda and Yidia. Um, they can take the quiz a couple of times. Right? They have two attempts to take it. It's nine points. So it's hopefully not too scary. Um, and then when they're done, they can see what they got right, what they got wrong, what they need to work on. Okay, I don't think a, a video is embedded here. Um, another thing that we can do in the class is kind of like social media. We have these discussion boards on Canvas on this platform that I can use as an assignment. I can create a video like I did here and I said, hey, I want you to tell me about some stuff in your house. Um, for this particular assignment, I'm teaching them shtoeta katoeta. And so I show some pictures and I say shtoeta at the telephone, katoeta at the Google. Um, and they have to do the same thing on this discussion board. And it's kind of like Facebook. Um, so they all have to respond. Each person makes a video where they take five things in their house and they have to decide is it shtol or katol. And then they video and put it here so all of us in the class can see it. And so they, they can practice this as many times as they want to feel really confident before they put it up. Um, it's really, really fun. They get into seeing this. Um, and this is just what it looks like for them when they're doing the assignment. They see, oh, okay, I have to choose media. I have to upload or record myself and answer these questions. And I also have, in this whole course, and like an overarching narrative about this little hedgehog. His name is Aya. Because in Russian culture, the hedgehog is much loved. And his name is Aya because English speakers cannot say this name. They see this and they say, Oleg. That's Oleg, always, always. If they can master this name, Alex, they're a beast. So, do you know, like, so, right? When, a, when O doesn't have udarinya, when it doesn't have it, it sounds like A. Ah. When L comes before Y, L, not L, but L, right? And then G at the end is not G, but K. So, right, so not Oleg. So if they get that, they are golden. Um, anyway, so Adye, he's this little hedgehog. He starts learning Russian just as my students are learning Russian. 
He develops a strong friendship with a Russian girl in her family, and he is depicted in scenes in the course that show Russia and Russian landscape. Um, this is how I've created the course so far. I am here in Uzbekistan to learn more about Uzbek and Central Asian culture so I can start putting pieces and images of Uzbek and uh, Central Asian culture into my courses, and so it's not just Russia. Um, but to show you what, what he looks like so far, here he is. This is a first reading assignment my students have. They try, you know, they practice reading. They, this helps them, it's short, it's little, right? It's this first, first little bit for them. And right here's Russian culture, um, Alyek in his snowy forest. Here he is at tea, and I have to talk to them what all of this is, samovar, what that is, and sushki, what these are, and... and why he's sitting on books. Right. <laughs> right. And then here he is in Vanya, you know, and it's just too hot. To, it's too hot for him. Um, but you know, like, what this... How was my Bathhouse. Sauna. sauna, yeah, sure, sauna. So I like the these these leaves, right? The birch, the birch leaves. That's so strange. <laughs> Why do you hit each other with the birch leaves? Right, and on on them like are these pieces of, of the leaves, right? And then here he's watching because he is Yojik, right? He's watching Hedgehog and the Fog. Yojik the Um So. They learn about this. And we also try, whenever possible, because we're online, we try to use authentic um, Russian language websites. So we go to like restaurants online. We um, talk about the weather. So I have them go here to this, this website and tell me what the weather is like in all of these cities. And everything here for us, for Americans, everything is new. So they see 12.9, and we don't understand, right? Because we understand Fahrenheit. They, they have to figure out everything. Is this cold? Is it hot? So, um, and, and, and this, right? Just by looking at this Russian language website, they already understand, or they can learn things without having a, a direct lesson without me saying, oh, what's the word for search? They figure it out like that, right? Because this bar, we all, everybody understands this, right? What that means, everybody. So even though that language for them, they don't know what it means, they do know what it means because this is universal, right? That sign, they understand that that's where you do search. Um, so I try how, whenever possible to give them authentic language. Um, so authentic sites, access to authentic sites. Or like to go to the ballet. You know, we explore the Bolshoi and I ask them, you know, how much is a ticket? What button do I push to buy a ticket? How much does it cost? What do they want to see? Um, ballet or opera? And then we're language, right? So they want to learn how to talk. They, they learn how to, they learn these rules from my videos, from the reading. They learn, they can do some exercises through the assignments I give them, but they also need to talk to each other and they need to practice. So what do we do? Um, I showed you how for that one assignment, they all had to upload a video on day one, our very, very first day of Russian. It's very scary. It's very scary. The first word they learn is, and they all go, no, 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 I can't do that. They say, no, that's impossible. It's like a sentence. What's that? It's like a sentence. It is a whole English. sentence. Yeah. <laughs> it's just <laughs> <laughs> Right, and so I break it down. I say, Zras, Vui, Yeah, practice, practice, practice. Very first homework they have, they have to upload a video saying, Zras, Vui, Tia, Minya, Zavut, Hezer, Ochem, Priyatna. 
every first class, they have to say this. And they have to say Orchim Priyatna to three people. So they can practice as much as they want before they upload it. And they can watch other students and copy, you know, say, okay, how does it sound? Copy them as much as they want before putting it here. And that benefits me because I know they're practicing. Before they put their video up there, I know they want to sound good. So they're practicing a lot. Um, so this is one this, from day one. This is how we, we get our start. I told you we don't meet in person, right? We don't meet in person. We don't have a printed textbook. But I get students to meet with each other in Zoom, and I'm not there. I tell them, figure out a time, meet in Zoom, and do this assignment. And they have to video it. In Zoom, they have to turn on record and send it to me so I can watch them. You know how in class, your teacher walks around and says, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, right, in class? This is my way of doing that. They record their meeting, I can watch them and I can say, okay, they got it, they got it, or maybe they don't have it. And I can talk to them, I can send them a note. This is, you, this is an example, okay, of what that's like. Bring, bring. Hello, слушаю вас. Hello, можно Ella? Да. Кто это? А, Ella, это там. Как дела? А, там. А, как дела ты? А, ну, 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 не, 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 Я думаю, я больной. Дякую, это не так. У меня выступает культура, у меня нас морг. We can do share, right? We can share our documents and we can read something together. Even though we're not in the same place, I can share this with everyone and say, read it, answer these questions. And everyone can comment on the site, even if it's not at the same time. Um, we also uh, like share, we share documents. Um, this was an example of this is a guy from Ekaterinburg, and he's a video blogger. I don't know if he is anymore. He was also a university student in Ekaterinburg. And I put a lot of his videos, his blogs, in our course for students to hear authentic Russian speech of a guy who goes to university, you know, what he sounds like. He says, you know. It's like, I don't talk like that, but he does. And so that's interesting. Um, and this was an, uh, an example of a shared document where I asked students to, ex to examine this page and tell me what's the word for password, right? They can find it like that because they're familiar with what this is. Everybody knows kind of the layout of Facebook and if I say, okay, find the word for password. What is it? They'll, they'll look around. They know telephone, it's not password, right? That's a cognate. It must be this, auto-link, right? That's password. Yay. Um, and so we can examine this and figure out things based on the context we already know. All right, search, password, login. Okay. So Aliak, right? You know, all right, I told you about Aliak. Another thing I thought was really fun for the students is to connect Alek with us. So like to, to tie in the two worlds. Um, so here, the students have a reading. They read right about Alek in his kitchen, how he's learning how to cook pelmeni or something. In the next lesson, my assistant is standing in his kitchen, right? So it's the same, she's in his same kitchen. Um, and so there's a crossover between the totally fake and the, the sort of real. And this is kind of fun too. Mm. Molly, the? 
Я голодна, мне не хочется поесть. У нас есть что-нибудь в холодильнике? Ну да, конечно. Ну, а, например, у нас есть сыр? О, да, много. А, и что, малый, я не слышала? Сыр есть? Сыр есть. А, хорошо, спасибо, сыр есть, хорошо. А сметана есть? Да, сметана. And so she, in real life, has no... She's thinking, is it there? I don't know. She doesn't really know. She doesn't see that. Um, and so we're talking very slow. Sir, yes? Huh? Yes? So the students get slow, you know, and loud. Um, <laughs> it's perfect. Okay. And then I get... I created an assignment where it's his birthday. After the students know him very well, they've read about him many, many times, they get to write him a, a card, a happy birthday card, where they congratulate him, you know. And so this is their, and they post, like, like social media, they post mm. on this discussion, and they can all see what, every, what each other says. So my hope is that they try really hard to sound good so that their classmates can see how how good they are. You know, they don't want to make a mistake in front of their classmates. And after a while, they do like, they do really start to love Talia. So for me, on my, on my side, when I see all of their work, we, they don't hand in papers, right? They don't turn in papers. We have no printed textbook. Everything is online. So how do I give them feedback? How do I grade them and give them feedback? Um, I can everything they turn into me or, or submit, I can mark, I can leave them comments, you know, hey, this was right, this was wrong. Mm -hmm. I can even leave them a video, I can leave them audio, and I do this all the time. So let's say if they, what's a, what's a word? Um, the word for Russia, for some reason, American students cannot say the word for Russia. They say Russia, that's mm -hmm. what they say, that's, and so I, Oh, and record myself all the time. Okay, это не Russia, Russia, and so all the time I send them these video messages to help uh, correct them. Um, so this is an example I uploaded. I can send them these. I can send them by document or PDF. I can send a video. I can send just notes and assignment comments. And then, so that's what we have so far. And now what we're gonna do, what we're hoping to do in the future, um, what we're trying to do right now and in the next few years is de-linking Russia from Russian language instruction. So like I was saying, so it's not focused just on Russian culture, but focused on the culture um, of Central Asia and the Baltics and the Caucasus where Russian is spoken. Mm -hmm. um, and either in, in even other places in the world outside of the former Soviet Republic. Partly because it's the right thing to do, right? I mean, there's a huge interesting world of Russian speakers that don't just speak Russian, but speak Uzbek or speak Tajik or speak, it's just a huge world that's not just Russia that we wanna show our students. But also we can't send our students to Russia or Ukraine anymore for who knows how long. So they have to learn about the greater Russian speaking world. If they want to learn Russian, they need to know about the entire Russian speaking world. Um, so we're, this is called decolonizing and diversifying the content so that we represent the broader Russian speaking world. We also are trying to increase accessibility for students who are low vision or blind. So we actually had a student last year who was completely blind. He couldn't see anything. And so you can imagine this being a very visual uh, format. It was really challenging for us to make sure that he was getting the appropriate information, adequate information for him to be able to learn the content. So one, one thing that we do is when we have a picture, um, there's what's called alt text. So if you're blind or low vision, mm -hmm. you can click on the picture and it'll read to you what it's a picture of. If you can't see it, you can get the audio, oh, this is a picture of a hedgehog 
holding a birthday cake, you know, so we're trying to do that for all of our images. Right now we don't have it, it's not complete. We need to uh, incorporate that. Um, but also hard of hearing. I've also had hard of hearing students in my class. So in addition to this alternative text for images, including um, captioning. So for students who are not able to hear very well, including captioning so that they can read um, what I'm saying on my video, uh, for example. Um, and then we're also trying to update the content as an open what's called an open educational resource, OER, so that it's free for everybody, anybody in the world who wants to take Russian can take it. Right now, only students at the University of Texas can take it. So we're trying to update it so anybody can take it in the world. Um, and that's a lot of work too. So we have to make sure that all of our images are not copyrighted uh, or that they're our own images. And then finally, AI, right? AI is a big new thing. We've got DALI, we've got chat, GPT. Um, what I wanna see is if we can creatively use programs like DALI um, for helping students with vocabulary and with language by creating, having them create visuals and using the visuals created with DALI as like a uh, communication device. Um, yeah, as a tool for language instruction and practice. Anyway, <laughs> that is all. Um, and Mark, my friend, he told me not to put any Russian here, but I said I have this. Oh, Krishna. Yes. Yeah.